Do you have more than one name for your pet? Do you have nicknames for all your friends? Do you now or have you ever been known by an assumed name, a doing business as name or other alias? So just answer the question please sir. Thank you. Based on your answers, you are a prime candidate for this video. Please proceed. Hello. Welcome. I am Jonathan Pritchard from iCanReadMinds.com and this video is going to be awesome. If you do have a lot of pet names and you call people by a lot of different names, this is so up your alley it won't even be funny. And as an extra bonus, we're going to be talking about deep linking and how that all works with aliases, which is a thing that I didn't know about for more than two years and didn't start using it for a long time after that. Uh, it's such a cool thing that I would hate for you to go the same time without making use of this thing. And uh, like I said, it's for people that call the same thing seven different names. Like uh, I've got a toddler and I call her Nugget, Monkey, um, Pookie, like all all sorts of nicknames. And we're going to see how that plays out in Obsidian and makes it super simple. So stick around. And welcome to the screen share. We are back into my YouTube demo vault. And if you have any questions about what I'm doing and how I'm navigating, I'm not going to be doing anything extra than what I've put into the hours of guides and tutorials that I've made already, put them all into an Obsidian playlist. So you should be able to find anything and everything that I'm going to be doing here with uh, one exception. We'll talk about that when we see it. But really, we're here to talk about aliases. And let's just jump in to see what it looks like and see how it works. For this example, I created a folder called people and then added myself to it. And then let's add some details. Professional mind reader and hobbies. Kung Fu. Debate. Urbit. Shuffling cards. Um, Cation, Asheville, North Carolina. If you're ever in the mountains, say hi. I'd love to, to see you. But this is a pretty good start for what we're talking about. Okay, so then imagine that we are in our daily note. I just hit Command D and brought up my, my daily note and say to do's. Uh, maybe one to do is uh, pay back Jonathan for lunch. Okay, so the file name is Jonathan Pritchard, but uh, I don't often refer to myself as Jonathan Pritchard. Maybe uh, it is strange to talk about myself in third person, but okay, we're just going with it. But basically, I would usually only say Jonathan. So how... How would I make this link say just Jonathan? Well, to do that, we hit the upright bar, not the backslash bar or forward slash bar, but shift backslash on the Mac laptop that I'm using right now. I'm just looking at the keyboard and it's the straight bar that if you hold down shift, it's the key right above return. So you hit shift and it's that vertical bar. So hopefully that makes sense to you. So vertical bar, however you get there, that's what it is. And then you could type in Jonathan. And there you go. That's the alias. So you can make links say whatever you want to say, not just what the title of the note that it's linking to says. So that's why this is really useful for all sorts of pet names. If you have a whole lot of things that, that you'd say, um, be Zavant, which is like an idiot Zavant, but punked up with a Z. That's the, the origin 
of my stage name, Johnny Zavant. Anyway, so now we can see that it's the Zavant, but when we click on it, it goes to Jonathan Pritchard. So that that's the alias. You can make an alias for any link that you want. Now, let's take it up a notch. The idea is that you hit the, the upright bar, then you type in whatever that that uh, alias will be, right? Say the mentalist. Okay, cool. There it is. Well, I I go by the Zavant, Jonathan, um, Mind Reader, Mister Pritchard, all, all sorts of all sorts of nicknames and stuff, right? So instead of having to type them every single time that I want to use an alias, because that would be really frustrating, that wouldn't be very efficient, and we're all about being efficient and getting the tool out of the way from how we want to use it, check this out. Say we go to the person's file that we have, and then we're going to go into properties. Now, it used to be that you'd have to do this more hand code kind of way, but with the fairly recent, as of the, this recording, the fairly recent update to how properties are handled, uh, graphic user interface people like me can use these way easier. So check this out. We'll bring up the command palette and then search for properties. And then I want to add a file property. So I hit enter and then it's not exactly obvious in here, but it is in here. And it's a pre-populated option called aliases. There you go. So here is where you can add all the aliases that you will use on a regular basis for this file that you link to often, right? So we can say these Avant enter the mentalist that guy mr pritchard okay cool so those are four aliases that i've now associated with jonathan pritchard cool let's go back to here and we'll delete this and now if you had noticed before, this little search box didn't show anything. And and I didn't know about adding aliases to the properties because I never used properties because it was clunky to use. So I had no clue what this search box was and didn't figure it out forever. So when I finally put all of this together, I was so excited. I was so stoked. So now when you link to that file you know what let's just clear it all out and okay we're creating a link and jonathan okay we can hit enter and that just does enter or i wonder if tab will autocomplete so tab will autocomplete but not go outside so we can then hit shift vertical pipe then we can choose which alias we want to use. And there we go. Payback Mr. Pritchard for lunch. How cool is that? Right? Like that's, that's really neat. But so that's the, the second level. But now we're going to take this up even farther. Okay, cool. This is useful in some places, more useful in others, sometimes not useful at all, but really good to know. You can use deep linking in combination with aliases. And I haven't done a, a whole video on deep linking, so I guess this is it. So we're, we're doing a twofer today. So the idea is we don't want to just link to the note, we want to link to a particular part of that note. And there are kind of two options. One I use all the time. The other I don't use at all 
and you'll see why. But here's the first way that I use all the time. You hit pound sign, and now it will show you all the different headings in the note. Now, here's one detail. You don't have to do two pound signs for headings or for the H2 headings and, and that kind of thing, right? That that doesn't make any sense, right? So um, this is the pound sign inside here just says, hey, look for the headings. Now, in the example, I had only done H1 tags. So for illustration purposes, I'm going to go back here and then say another area and then a 3H tag here, right? And I'm going to put in a whole lot of text. Uh, this is the one thing that I haven't covered and what you just saw is a text expander. I did do a video about why you should consider using a text expander. And as you just saw, I'm able to use it inside Obsidian. I'm able to use it inside every program that I can enter text on my computer, which is really cool. Uh, so if you want to find out what a text expander is and how and why it might help you out, then uh, definitely go watch that video. Uh, but for now, let's get back to figuring out this deep linking thing. Okay, so we've got multiple heading types. We've got some areas here. All right. Now we're fully prepared. Let's arrow back in to the, the link to the note, hit the pound sign. And now you can see all the headings that are in the note. So let's say we link to another area. So now there's a lot going on here, but hopefully it makes sense. We're linking to the Jonathan Pritchard note specifically the another area part of the note. And we want this link to show up as Mr. Pritchard, which is one of the registered aliases of Jonathan Pritchard, right? That, that file. So now pay back Mr. Pritchard for lunch. So, um, you can, you can now click on the link. And instead of just going to the note, it will highlight this area through the next the the next level, right? Of of heading. Uh, we'll say second area heading and to, to test this out. So now we'll click and voila. Uh, so this was a second level. The first time it included all of this because Obsidian in its brain was saying, oh, this second level has all of this third level under it as well. So we're just going to highlight everything under the second level until we hit another second level or first level heading. So that little bit of highlighting is just saying, Hey guy, this is the section that, that you wanted to see. So that is crazy useful. That's the, the way that I use this all the time, most often, right? Because I like having headings here and then just linking to that heading makes the most sense to me, right? So maybe location, um, the, the wording makes this confusing of, of where uh, you'd want to use this so you could say here is where Pritchard lives, right? Well, if we spelled where correctly. So now you could click that and then it would take you to <laughs> the section that I linked and we would have to delete that and then say, okay, here's the location. Voila. Now when we click, it'll show us the location. And since location is a top level heading and this is a second, that's a second and that's a third. That's why it's highlighting everything instead of just the location. So if you wanted it to, to stop doing that, 
you'd have to add another stop doing that top level heading and then voila it would just show location hopefully that makes sense okay so that's what i wanted to show you with the cool way that this works and then here's the goofy way and i i don't understand why it works this way um i, I mean i probably get why it works this way but i i don't use it because it works this way and hopefully it would work some other way then i would use it say you want to get even more granular than just the headings maybe you wanted a particular paragraph or sentence or whatever okay instead of using a pound sign inside your link to your note we're going to use the up caret which for me is a uh, shift six on the keyboard so now basically every time you hit enter it's telling obsidian oh, okay we could link to that so you can see that this big old paragraph is one we could link directly to this paragraph all right cool when we click this it creates this hash this unique identifier that doesn't exist anywhere else in your vault and associates it with that section that you want to link to okay so then we can change this a little bit goofy mr pritchard example there we go now when i click here it's going to take us straight to that paragraph and here's why it's goofy to me it adds this link to it like it's visible it's in the text and i tried going to reading version or something and it's it's gone from there but i never go to the specific reading version i'm always in the active preview version so i i just don't like seeing the the tag identifier that's it that's that's why i don't use it it's incredibly useful it's incredibly powerful very simple to use but i don't like it because it's ugly that's it all right so maybe you're not bothered by it maybe your aesthetic sensibilities are not insulted by this particular approach but for whatever reason it, it's just so so goofy to me that i just go yeah, I'm, I'm gonna link to the the headings instead but there you go that is how to hand type an alias how to create and save aliases that you use all the time now you can set up those nicknames for all your friends and clients as long as uh, this is not a client facing database you can name them whatever you want and also added benefit you now know two different ways to deep link into your vault let's go to the outro there you go that is aliases is r that's what's a, a that's what i have to say about aliases thank you so much for sticking with me i genuinely appreciate it hopefully you found this valuable if you did give me a, a thumbs up the youtube algorithm just tells people what you like it's not some mystery but the thing that it's not is a mind reader if you watched it and thought oh that was really good youtube doesn't know that until you give it a thumbs up or you could subscribe if you want more videos like this uh, but if you're not ready for that kind of commitment then i strongly suggest that you stick around for the video that youtube thinks you should watch next in the meantime remember that if you can change your mind you can change your life <laughs>